Hi guys, it's Shell, Heart of It All Custom Creations. Welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button to see future videos. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. So today we are making a adorable ice cream cone tumbler. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. So I'm starting out with this 20 ounce Modern Curve tumbler from the Stainless Depot. And um, this one has a screw on lid. So the first thing I really needed to do was to figure out where the lid, the front and the back was so that I could mark, I always mark the back of my tumblers so that I know that the mark is the back. And then um, that way your pattern and all that ain't gonna be messed up. So after that, I went ahead and took a marker and marked inside the tumbler so that when I do sand this, I will not be sanding off my mark. And then I am going to go ahead and completely prep my tumbler by um, sanding it down with a sanding sponge I got from Amazon. You can get these pretty much anywhere, any hardware, Dollar Tree, um, but these happen to be from Amazon. And um, once I completely um, prepare this, I will take 91% uh, rubbing alcohol and um, clean the tumbler um, of any of the dust and debris so that when we go to paint, it will stick to the tumbler very nicely. I am going to use um, Waverly chalk paint. Uh, I didn't have a paint of what you would consider a cone <laughs> um, color, so I went ahead and used my chalk paint. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and um, paint this and this really only needed one coat. Chalk paint covers so well and I'm going to use this while it's still wet um, to adhere the glitter. So I'm going to continue to paint the entire tumbler before we move on to glittering. The glitter I'm going to use is Flurries by PG Olive Glitters, and it is just a stunning um, white, but of course any color underneath that is going to show through. So this does look like, a um, bunch the epoxies on anyway, it will look more um, cone colored, I guess. <laughs> so once I let that get everything all the glitter on there, I do let this sit to fully dry. Did not take long, chalk paint does not take long at all, but I did probably give this a good hour or so before I went in and did two coats of epoxy. And once I did that, um, I take it off and I'm cleaning up my rim. I'm making sure any of that epoxy that seeped down over the edge, um, I clean up and then I am gonna take my sanding block and expose some of that stainless steel um, tumbler just a little bit um, so that when we go to put our final coats of epoxy on it will adhere to the tumbler itself and then I'm just any rough spots that there might have been left from the glitter I do sand that very lightly and then I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with the rubbing alcohol I'm running really low in my spray bottle so I need to refill that and clean that up and then we will move on to um, making this really look like a cone I had cut out um, this vinyl, uh, it's kind of cone shaped or shape colored, and I just did a bunch of X's. Um, the cone that I found online um, had like the two X's or whatever you want to call them that you see up at the top of the cone, and then of course the waffle pattern on the bottom. So I'm just removing all of that vinyl that I don't need before I can put some transfer tape on and put this on the tumbler.
So I will let you know that placing this on a curved tumbler was kind of tricky. I thought I had cut it short enough that it would just be kind of straight around the bottom. Apparently it's not straight around the bottom, um, which was fine. I just had to do a little finagling, but um, I did place this around as best as possible. And then I'm going to remove the um, part that I had cut off, place that down, and then carefully go around and um, put the rest of that vinyl down. Um, of course, it was too long at the bottom, which was fine. I knew I was going to be cutting that off anyway. And it does overlap in the back, but I was able to fix that. And you can't even see it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the transfer tape and then um, fix what needs to be fixed. So for the bottom, I started to cut it off and then I remembered I have a new um, cup edging tool. So I am using my new cup edging tool by Cami Page Boutique and it is amazing. So um, I just use that to go around the bottom and then of course fixing that seam so that you can't even tell. And then I will take the, um, apparently I'm still cutting, so <laughs> we're going to deal with all of that. Um, I do end up putting words over to where the seam would have been because it completely covered up any mistake that there would be. So um, yeah, that's what I did there. But then I'm just pulling off all that excess vinyl from after when I cut it. And anyone that works with vinyl, you know how it likes to stick to your fingers. So that was fun. And then I'm going to take um, painter's tape all the way around and cut off to get it as even as possible all the way around. So I just had to cut off a little bit um, from up at the top. And then once that's done, I'll remove all of that vinyl and the painter's tape. So I cut out a 0.250 um, width by 11, which way too long, but that's fine. Um, piece of vinyl to go around the top of where the cone base is so that um, if you look at a cone, it kind of gets that little lip thing. And so I kind of wanted to mimic that. Of course, this isn't the exact shape of an actual cone, but... It's the best that I could do. So now it's time to place the um, top portion on and I do one on the front and one on the back. And because it is a curved service, I did make little slits into the transfer tape to make it lay down a lot better. Otherwise it would have really buckled. Um, it did buckle towards the bottom, which was no big deal. All I had to do was pick it up and um, place it back down, as you can see right here. And it lays down perfectly. So now that all that vinyl work is done, I am going to seal this with the CCDIY Quick Coat. I do not want any of this vinyl lifting. There's a lot of vinyl on here. So I did a coat of epoxy and then it was smooth enough to be able to move on to adding the words. So I 
um, had been seeing a quote of, because I was looking at all, all different quotes for the ice cream, and I saw life is better with sprinkles, which, duh. So I thought that was the perfect quote for this tumbler. So I am placing this on the bottom um, because I am going to do a chocolate drip a little later. And I didn't want, um, if by chance the uh, drip had come down further, I didn't want it covering up any of the words. So now I'm just sort of placing the words on here, um, making sure that it lines up with the offset. And then um, I do seal this with the CC DIY clear coat. Give it one coat of epoxy before we move on to the next part. So of course I thought I was filming when I made this, but I got these molds from Amazon and it is an ice cream scoop, which is perfect. So I just added a little bit of um, ivory white mica powder in and did the base um, with the car coaster mold and um, the ice cream cone. And then I did a second one because the way that this lid is kind of slants and um, I needed to raise it up just a little bit. So I made a second one and then I cut the sides off so that we can place it like that and then that on top and then of course the the ice cream on top of that so I am going to um, glue these technically three pieces <laughs> together so that it'll be permanent and um, aren't isn't going to fall apart but I am doing a topper with the ice cream with the chocolate drip and sprinkles for this but the first thing I had to do was um, that so now that we're that's dried um I am using chestnut brown in my epoxy. I am using the KS Resin Liquidy Split, and it's amazing. And I'm sorry if you can hear my grandson yelling. But anyway, I mix this up, and this chestnut brown is like the perfect chocolate color. It's awesome. So um, I let this sit for a while and thicken up, um, probably about 10, 12 minutes before it got to the consistency that I wanted. And I'm just going to... Um, um, not pour it, but let it drizzle over the ice cream um, like it would if you were just pouring chocolate on ice cream. So I'm going to do that and you'll see a big oopsie here and oh, it was a mess. But um, I just have this sitting on like a plastic cup and I didn't think to use tape to hold it there. And you'll see here in about one second what happens. <laughs> It was a disaster, but I was able to completely fix it. It was no big deal. There we go. It fell. So I was able to fix it. I got epoxy all over my hand, had to clean that off real quick. Um, and then I'm going to set that aside and um, do the tumbler. So I'm going to go around and make sure that I get all of that covered. And I'm going to tap it so that, that the drip started to um, come down and in the end, it ended up the drip doesn't come down as far as I kind of hoped it might, but it still looks good. And I probably could have put the words up on the top, but so yeah, once I get the the chocolate the chocolate drip to where I want it, then we're gonna move on to adding the sprinkles. And the sprinkles I got from Amazon in a big kit um, with different sprinkles. So um, everything that I use will be listed in the description box. So here's me tapping again, just to kind of get some of that moving. Um, liquidy split tends to set up super quick. Um, and it is a, especially when it gets um, warm, it comes really thick. So yeah, I was, but I was happy with how this ended up looking. Um, and then I take the sprinkles and I'm literally just going to sprinkle them on. And um, after about three hours of this, um, setting up, I was able to go into my first coat of epoxy, um, just to make sure that the sprinkles were covered because they're the polymer clay and I wanted them to be able to be safe with the epoxy. So I did do a coat of epoxy over that. And then once that was set, I did my final coat of epoxy. Um, 
for those. And for the chocolate, uh, the ice cream, all I did was just take my, dip my finger into the epoxy and just rub it all the way around um, to make sure that everything was covered. Uh, mainly, I was just worried more about the sprinkles. But yeah, so that's what I'm doing now is just adding the sprinkles. I'm gonna let that sit to cure. And then I was able to go into my layers of epoxy. But the next thing you're gonna see is after the second coat of epoxy, it's all done. What I just need to do is clean up the rim of this. Um, I should have probably done this part after the first coat of epoxy, but I got too impatient and just didn't. So I'm cutting off the <laughs> excess epoxy now. Um, and then after I get this done, I will finish up the topper so that we're able to connect it to the lid and it is removable so that if, you know, you don't want the, um, the topper on, you don't have to. And you'll see why too, I had to do the, the two pieces. So yeah. So the next thing I'm going to do is I don't know what I'm doing here. But anyway, now we're going on to adding the uh, magnets to the topper and I'm using UV resin. And I grabbed this with metal tweezers and it did not wanna come off. So I set this up, held them down and then um, used my UV flashlight to cure it there. Then I was able to remove that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side um, and this allows the um, top part of the, the topper um, to be able to release from the actual lid itself. The only thing that'll be permanent on the lid will be two magnets. And you can see here, um, the lid flips up instead of like sliding up. So I just put two dots of epoxy down, place that down onto the lid and use my light to adhere it. And um, I don't show you curing the whole thing because it does take a little bit of time to cure. And then I am going to hold it there and then turn it upside down so that I can get underneath um, to make sure that it is all completely attached. And um, once that is done, you'll be able to see how I'm able just to remove that ice cream right off, but the, you see the magnets stay there. And you can still close the lid then. Um, but of course, if you're drinking it with the topper on, you're not gonna be able to. Um, Oh, so now here's after the final coats of epoxy, cleaning up my rim again. And um, so that last one must have been before, after the drip cured. Honestly, I don't remember. I did this a while ago. So <laughs> um, please forgive me for not uh, remembering the steps um, exactly. So I'm cleaning the inside of my tumbler, which is some 91% alcohol. Um, and then um, going to show you placing the topper on, screwing it onto the, the tumbler itself. And you can see here, it fits nicely. And when you're drinking it, the outside facing will be the words. And then um, that's what you would see facing you. And then you can just take that topper right off and you're able to close that lid. The magnets don't affect it and then place that right back on, but yeah. And because this is covered with box epoxy, you can hand wash this, so that's absolutely perfect. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a great big thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.